Well, as you guys can see, we got these gorgeous tomatoes that we're gonna be talking about today. Psych, did you really think we were gonna be talking about tomatoes? Come on, man, this is a spear fishing video. All right, let's get to it. Welcome, welcome guys. And today's topic for discussion, spear fishing equipment. So I'm gonna go over some of the equipment that I use when I go out spear fishing. Uh, the equipment that I used when I got started and if you're somebody that's looking to get started with spearfishing or freediving I'm going to go over some of the requirements and some of the tools and equipment that you're going to need to get started so let's get to it the most important aspect of this and if you are somebody that is looking to get into spearfishing I would say is take a class okay when you're getting started this is a pretty dangerous sport there are stuff that happens there is chances for blackout there's chances for injuries so you want to make sure that you limit those risks the biggest thing is make sure you take a free diving or spearfishing class so out here in the Pacific Northwest uh, I, I took my class with Dan Samrad from Oregon Freediving Company and he is an amazing instructor so I'd recommend checking him out but also just look into a class that you can take some wherever you're located make sure that you do know the basics of free diving and how to get better and the do's and don'ts okay so for me when I started I didn't take a class but it wasn't until after I got I got done taking the class that I realized I was making a lot of mistakes at the beginning that could have cost me my life or could have put me in a bad spot so the most important thing is make sure you take that class guys because stuff can happen you want to make sure you're comfortable in the water which brings me to my next point make sure that you're comfortable in the water okay you're going to be going in dark spots depending on kind of where you're at where you're located the fishing that you're going to be doing but it is creepy you know coming up to a rock and there's a big link cod or there's a big fish sitting there and or it swims away and it scares you so you got to be nice calm cool and collected and you have to be super relaxed so i would recommend starting off practicing in a pool somewhere that's going to be shallow somewhere that's going to allow you that's going to have good visibility that will allow you to be nice and calm and then eventually you can work your way up to you know a lake a river and then up to the ocean guys you're going to need a wetsuit and depending on what uh, what type of water that you're diving um, and also the temperature depending on where you are located in the United States um, this is going to vary so because I do all my spear fishing here out in the Pacific Northwest uh, out in Oregon I have a 7 mil and then also have a 5 mil wetsuit so you want to make sure that you go for something that's a little bit higher quality um, so I went with the Cressy Tracina and I have the exact same wetsuit in a 5 mil and a 7 mil so when I got started I had a 5 mil and I thought that would be enough and to be honest, here in Oregon, the weather, you know, the water gets, uh, you know, mid 40s at the coldest in the winter and in the summer, it's somewhere about mid 50s. Um, and I was decently warm with that uh, five mil wetsuit, but if you want to be a little bit more comfortable, I'd recommend going for something a little bit thicker. Um, so I have been spearfishing. I've made some trips up and uh, up to Alaska, which this thing has been very useful. So I would recommend going with something that's going to be a little bit thicker that's going to keep you warm um, and mine is the pant style so as you can see there's two types of spear fishing uh, what suits you have the pant style and then you also have the long john style so the long johns basically go they're suspenders that go over your shoulders and i personally like the uh, the pant style a little bit better uh, it's a little less warm so try to kind of keep that in mind but uh, it's a little bit more comfortable, especially when you are doing your breathe up. Uh, you're not, you don't feel so compressed here up in the chest. So make sure that you do end up investing in a good quality wetsuit because I think that's one of the most important things. And I've been in the water where I'm cold. You just can't relax and you know, your dives are going to be a lot shorter than if you are nice and comfortable and nice and warm. So make sure invest in a good wetsuit. Gloves, okay. So the gloves don't have to be extremely thick. Um, I wear three millimeter gloves and these were plenty warm here in the Pacific Northwest and you will go through these a good amount so I'd recommend it's not important to go with anything too nice uh, I mean I do have ones that do end up matching my wetsuit but um, I think these are my fourth or fifth pair in the last two years so you are going to go through gloves I'd recommend maybe something a little bit durable uh, and something that um, is going to is going to last you for a longer period of time um, so keep an eye don't spend too much on gloves you are going to be going through a lot of them uh, make sure you have a good set of booties the ones that i have are the cressy tracina elastic span three millimeter so same color as my wetsuit and i think these are my fourth or fifth pair of these so because i end up 
doing a lot of spearfishing in the jetties. I have a little bit of a hike to the end of the jetty. These things get torn up. So keep that in mind. If you want something a little bit more durable, um, I'd recommend um, getting something that's a little bit thicker on the bottom that is not going to uh, make a bunch of holes. As you can see, this is one of my old booties. I mean, the heel is all torn up. All right, and up towards the toes, it gets torn up as well. So when that happens, if you're, if you're diving in deeper, colder water, you are gonna tend to feel your legs getting a little bit cold, uh, but normally within five to 10 minutes, it goes away. So it's not too important to have your, your hands and your feet covered, but I still would make sure that you do have good seals and you are gonna keep, you will stay nice and warm. So make sure you invest in some socks. So with the fins, I would start out with something that's going to be a little bit cheaper. Uh, you do want, however, the longer fins. So I believe these are a 38 inch, um, uh, 36 or 38 inch. So you do want something that's going to be a little bit longer. That's going to allow you to be a little bit more efficient when you are kicking through the water. And the one thing you do need to know about fins, they're, they're going to come in different stiffness. So there's a soft stiffness, there's a medium stiffness and a hard stiffness. So depending on how strong your kick is and how strong of a person you are, um, you can choose kind of the style of fin that you go for. So this is a medium stiffness and it basically has a little bit of a harder bend to it. If you get a hard stiffness, it's gonna be a lot harder to kick. Um, you are gonna be able to uh, transfer a lot, of flat, uh, a lot of power to your kicks. However, you are gonna be using up a little bit more energy and you probably will be a little bit less efficient unless you do have that good strength, quad strength good leg strength. But for me, I went with the medium stiffness. I am a fairly strong guy, uh, especially in my legs. I played soccer my whole life and, and been cycling. So I went with the medium stiffness and these have been pretty, pretty good. Um, if you want to start out, if you want something that's going to be a little bit uh, easier to kick, then you can go with the soft stiffness and that will be a lot more smoother into the water. And later on, once you do end up getting a little bit better, I would recommend investing in something that's going to be a little nicer because for one, you, I mean, I've had this pair for the last two and a half years and it's all scuffed up as you can see, um, but the fin is in perfect condition and that's the same as the day that I bought it other than all the uh, scuffs on it. So uh, it's definitely good to invest in a good pair. However, if you're starting out, don't break the bank, find something that's gonna be comfortable. Maybe even check Goodwill, check something online, check Craigslist. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of gear that people like to get rid of. So um, if you can buy some secondhand stuff, I'd, I'd recommend going that route. The next thing we wanna make sure that we do invest in is a good high quality mask. Okay guys, this, I can't stress enough, the wetsuit and the masks, extremely important that we do end up getting something that's higher quality. So you wanna make sure that you get something that's gonna fit your face. So for me, I do have a larger nose. So when I went in, and I talked to Dan at Discover uh, at Oregon Freediving Company. I tried on a couple masks and, masks and I got to see kind of how they sit on my face and um, uh, how comfortable they were because you're gonna be wearing this, you wanna make sure it's something that doesn't leak, something that's not gonna fog up on you super fast and something that's gonna be comfortable. For me, there was a couple that I tried that kind of bugged me here on the bridge at the top. So they were hitting the top of my nose. So I ended up getting something that's a little bit uh, better quality, and I think these are the Hammerhead 3s. I mean, it's really good, um, really good free diving and spear fishing mask. And also I wanted to make sure that I, I do end up recording my videos. So I have a GoPro mount on here. This is nice because depending on where I'm looking, I can record this. So I wouldn't recommend focusing too much when you're getting started on, on you know, recording yourself. Make sure that you are nice and safe. But later on, as you get more comfortable, you can start to focus. If you do want to record your videos, this is probably the best way. You don't even notice the camera's there and it's, it's, it's pretty comfortable. It is a little bit, you can feel the drag, uh, but it's, it's not anything that's of, uh, of concern. Also, simple standard snorkel or J, J snorkel. Nice and simple. This was, I think, $18. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need anything that's gonna you know, stop the water going through. Um, I think you'll be at a point where you're, you get experience fairly enough that this is super reliable and super simple. So make sure that you have a really good quality mask and, and snorkel. Next thing, uh, make sure you have a good knife, okay? Um, well, it doesn't have to be good, but make sure that you do have a knife. I think this is the third knife that I've gone through in the last, last couple of years. So 
you do want a knife so you can stone the fish as soon as you um, as soon as you uh, get it on your spear. We want to make sure that we stone whether it's a lingcod, rockfish, kelp greenly, whatever it is. Stone the fish, kill it as soon as possible so that way it doesn't cause you any issues when you are getting it off of your gun. And uh, in case something happens, you want to make sure you have a knife on you. You know, if you get snagged in some lines where, where we're end up fishing, there's a lot of fishermen. So if I end up getting wrapped up in a line, which has never happened, um, I have a knife, you can cut yourself, you can free yourself. So I have, however, had my line, my shaft gets stuck into a rock right at the end of my dive. And it was either going down and trying to unhook it or it was uh, just leaving and losing my gun. And unfortunately, um, or actually luckily, I was able to swim down. I had enough, enough of a uh, energy and, uh, and, and breath to go down and unhook the, um, the spear and get my gun out. But that was extremely scary. Uh, so I'd recommend have a knife if something happens cut that line and uh, you have a knife also to stone the fish. So that's always really nice to have in your arsenal. Well, the next thing you want to get is a gun. All right. And without a gun, you can't get any fish. So the one that I have is a JBL Woody 38 special. So it's a perfect size for here out in the Oregon coast. We do end up getting pretty bad visibility out here. So you want to make sure that you get something that's going to be a little bit smaller. That's a little bit more uh, you're able to navigate through the rocks and something that's not going to be too long and too too much of a hassle. You know, something that you you can see the end of the spear tip because sometimes it does end up getting four or five feet of visibility here, and it's extremely hard to shoot something that you can't even see where your shaft is going to go. But depending on where you're going to be doing your spear fishing, that's what I would recommend for a gun. So because the visibility out here is pretty bad, I went with something a little bit smaller, and it's a two band. So the band loads, the second band loads, and you're all set. So I super simple, all right, very efficient gun. Uh, the bands for me, I mean, I think I've exchanged, I think I've broken three or four bands in the last two years. Other than that, you know, they're also you're gonna go through some spear tips as well, you know, hitting them in the rocks, bending them, all that stuff. I've probably gone through three or four. But yeah, the gun is super, super light, super compact, and it's been it's been a good, good investment for me so far, and it's it's my favorite go-to gun for here out in the Pacific Northwest. Um, what I did end up getting is, however, a reel. So after that time, I did end up getting my, my shaft stuck into the rocks. I went ahead and got a reel. So basically now, if my shaft ends up getting stuck or if I hit a fish and the fish ends up swimming into a hole, um, I can just release the tension, all right, the line goes, and uh, I can just swim up to the surface catch my breath when I'm ready, you know, I can follow that line down and get the fish. Next thing we're gonna grab, all right, is the fish stringer. All right, we wanna make sure we have a fish stringer. When you get the fish, you don't want them tethered to you. Uh, just a risk factor, you know, if you're diving in a place where there's seals or there's other, other animals, other fish that um, could end up coming up and, and grabbing your bait, you wanna make sure that you have this away from you. So what I do is I just have a simple stringer, right? Uh, pointy end, the fish slides on here, and, and then I just have this clipped to my float, okay? So this thing just kind of floats and follows me as I'm diving, and I connect my fish on here. So I basically have one side that's connected to my stringer, and I have my stringer on here, okay? And that way my fish aren't with me and I'm a little bit more mobile. I'm able to swim around the rocks and don't have to worry about carrying much equipment with me. So one side I have my spear or I have my float line. The other side I have my fish stringer. While I'm swimming, I have my gun in my hand. Um, this float line is connected, tethered to the float, which is connected to my float line. So once I do end up hitting a fish, I just swim to my float line or I pull it in and I just load my fish onto my stringer and don't have to worry about carrying it with me. And in case of an emergency, if I ever need to drop my gun or I need to use my, my gun as a marker, then I just leave my gun down at the bottom and I can just follow the float line all the way down to my gun and I can retrieve it. And in worst case scenario, if I have to drop my gun and come up to the surface, I'm not gonna lose a you know, $300 gun. So this thing has caused me a lot of pain. So weight belt make sure that you guys have a weight belt with the proper weights on there um, so 
there have been three or four times where I've forgotten this thing and it is hard, hard, hard to spearfish without it. And unless you get down to 30 feet, 40 feet, you're going to be super buoyant and it's going to be hard to get down. So I recommend getting a weight belt and weights that are going to be specific for you. So make sure that you don't go too much weights. So you don't want to be you know, sinking at the top and kicking to stay up at the same time. Um, you don't want to be kicking to get down and not being able to and just floating at the top. I'm 180 pounds, six foot, and I use 12 pounds for my seven mil wetsuit and about nine pounds on my five mil wetsuit. So knowing those numbers is gonna be crucial so that way you guys, ideally, depending on where you're doing your spear fishing, at what depth. So if you're spear, spear fishing at about 15, 20 feet, you'd wanna set your weight belt to where you're somewhat neutral at that depth since you're gonna stay there because it's not fun trying to kick to get down or you know sinking like a rock. So make sure that you guys do end up finding the right amount of weight to put on your weight belt. And a couple optional items, a flashlight, all right? Especially if the visibility is pretty bad, you do want a flashlight. And if you do hole hunting, for example, here we go for Lincod. There are a lot of them throughout the rocks, you know, in holes. You want to make sure you have a, uh, a decent light that's going to be able to, um, you know, I'd say at least five, 500 to 1,000 lumens that's going to be able to give you good light when you're down at the bottom when the visibility is not that great. Sea drops. So this makes sure that I don't fog up my... Uh, don't fog up my mask when I do end up spearfishing. And normally what I do is once I rinse all my gear after I'm done spearfishing, um, when I come back from my trip, I just put these on, they dry up into my mask, and the next time I have no issues with my mask fogging up. So another trick you can do is you can burn off the, uh, the layer. There's like a little layer film that's on the mask when you buy it. You can burn that off and it's not gonna allow you to get, it's not gonna, make the fogging super bad but however i've noticed that it still does fog up so i do like using sea drops and another thing you guys are going to need is a proper checklist and trust me this one is important i have thing gone to the coast without any fins i have forgot my weight belt i've forgotten my wetsuit before everything everything you can think of i've, I've gone i've forgotten my gun before so after that kind of started to happen i ended up making a checklist and before i end up going out to the coast I go through my checklist and make sure that I have everything with me because it's no fun driving out an hour and a half, getting to the coast and realizing you can't spearfish. So, but also it's gonna allow you to be a little bit more prepared. So for me, I include the weather report in my checklist as well, making sure that I look over the weather, know what I'm doing, know what the weather's doing, know what the swells are, know what the temperature is, know everything, know as much information as I can before I go out there, which is gonna make my dive a little bit more of a success and a cooler. That's not really required, but you can have one. A fillet knife with you would be good, so that way you can keep the fish and you know clean it there at the clean, uh, cleaning station. I also do have my GoPros on there as well and a towel, and because I'm recording all my footage, I wanna make sure that I have that on my checklist. So make a checklist that involves all of the equipment that you need, and then just go through that checklist before you go out to the coast, and you'll, you'll be a lot happier, and you'll, know, you'll make sure that you know uh, you're not missing anything and another thing i would recommend guys is get a dive buddy find somebody in your local area that is a spear fisherman or somebody that is a, could be a mentor to you and really go out and pick their brain you know chat with them see what got them started what got them motivated see if they can you know tag along with if, if you can tag along with them on a spear fishing trip i think i think people like going out with people and uh, especially if you're eager, eager to learn and somebody that is interested in improving in the sport and are asking the right questions, I would recommend definitely going with somebody so that way you're not by yourself. And it's a lot more riskier when you're out there and you know that there isn't anybody that's going to be able to see you or spot you if anything goes wrong. And especially somebody that has taken a free diving class before, then, you know, that makes me more comfortable knowing the fact that they know what to do if something goes wrong with me. Whereas if I'm the only one that is, that's taking a free diving class and all the people around me are protected, well, what happens if I end up blacking out and nobody knows the procedures and nobody knows what to do? That puts me in a risky situation. Find a buddy that you can uh, go spearfishing with and it's gonna be a lot funner. Also, you can share stories and compete a little bit and see who gets, a, who gets the bigger fish and who gets the most fish. So that's always exciting as well. Well guys, thanks for watching my videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like spearfishing, if you like freediving, and you're just an adventurous person. 
Also, let me know if there's something that I missed out that I did not include on my checklist. I'll make sure to uh, throw it on there, or at least if it makes sense for me, I'll include it in my kit. And other than that, hope you guys have an amazing day, and uh, see you in the next video.